And now, a Snoodle's tail. Far, far away in the land of Galoots, where the biggle bag trees bear their biggle bag fruits, and far lily bushes all blossom in yellow, and thin bottle plants squirt snowberry jello. Here, where the mountains of Rocky Magoo rise high o'er the meadows of Gilda Manju, where sunsets are painted with purple and blue, you'll find a small town, not much bigger than you. Welcome to Snoodleburg, home of the Snoodles, a curious folk who eat pancakes with noodles and spend half their days making sketches and doodles and cutting their hair into shapes like French poodles. Now, right in the heart of this curious town is a curious building, the tallest around, with a clock at its top and a chute at its bottom. Tis pink in the spring and turns red in the autumn. But weirder by far than its color or height is what happens there every fourth Tuesday night. As strange as it seems, it has been demonstrated that snoodles aren't born, but rather created. Every fourth Tuesday at quarter past nine, the tower will shimmy and rattle and whine, and as the town nibbles on biggle bag fruit, a shiny young snoodle will drop from the chute. That's where they come from, though no one knows why. Nor who could have built the great tower so high? These mysteries of life befuddle most snoodles, who'd much rather focus on pancakes and noodles and cutting their hair into shapes like French poodles. Yes, most found the tower too noisy and strange, until one small snoodle made all of that change. This little snoodle was much like the others. He came without siblings, no sisters or brothers. He came without money, a mom or a dad. The pack on his back was all that he had. This is peculiar. The little guy said. I came from a chute and I fell on my head. What do I look like? What am I for? He pondered those questions and then thought of more. Checking my bag is a good place to start. He pulled out some paints. Maybe I'm good at art. The next thing he found was a snoodle kazoo. Hey, what do you know? I can make music too. Then back on his pack, he pulled a small string, and out from the sides popped two little wings. Amazing! He said with a gleam in his eye. I can paint, play kazoo, and now I can fly. Wait till the others see all the great things I can do with my paints, my kazoo, and my wings. So he packed up his paints and his snoodle kazoo, and he hopped off to show them all what he could do. There, from the top of a short, stubby wall, the big snoodles heard the new small snoodle call. Come watch me, you guys, as I head for the sky. He straightened his wings with a gleam in his eye. Then he jumped and he flapped like the red snoodled finches that fly from the plains to the peak of Mount Ginches. His flight, unlike theirs. Oof. Covered only twelve inches. You call that flying? You think you're a bird? We've never seen anything quite so absurd. The old snoodle <laughs> snorted. He sniggered. He shook. I'll paint you a picture to show how you looked. The brushstrokes were skillful. The colors were coolish. The story they told made the young one feel foolish. Take it from us. Said a snoodle named Lou. Flying just isn't what you're meant to do. The young snoodle drooped. He felt his heart sag. The painting the old snoodle placed in his bag. Carry this with you, the old snoodle said. So visions of flying don't go to your head. The weight on his back was as heavy as lead. So under the weight of the picture he bore, he hobbled along, feeling lonely and sore. Till up far ahead on a bench near the tower, he spied a bright bundle of far lily flowers. His heart started lifting. What beautiful things! Then he remembered. I've got more than wings. So quickly he dug the paints out of his pack and hoped that with art, maybe he'd have the knack. I did it! He yelled to the snoodles in town. Then held up his picture as they gathered round. You did it all right. Said the snoodles, replying, "You showed you're no better at painting than flying." Then one of them laughed, and while eating a waffle, painted a picture that made him feel awful. Your 
You're puny. You're silly. You're not all that smart. You can't use your wings, and, and you're, you're no good at art. <laughs> that picture, too, was placed in his pack and made his heart slump just as low as his back. I'm ugly. I'm foolish and so very small. I don't think I should be with Snoodles at all. And so he decided to get out of town. His wings hung so low that they dragged on the ground. He walked past the tower and out of the city. He walked through the fields and thought, My, this is pretty. The far lily bushes all blooming in yellow and thimbital plants squirting snowberry jello. I might like it here, said the small snooty fellow. Then feeling some warmth coming back to his chest, he thought he would sit for a moment and rest. But try as he might to sit down with grace, the weight on his back knocked him flat on his face. Ha! Ah! Ah, ha! That's a who! Said a voice from behind. A farmer stood up with a thimbuttle vine. Why, you need a picture, my Snoodleberg bud. Lest you forget how you look in the mud. And so in an instant, the picture was done and placed in his backpack, which now weighed a ton. The poor Snoodle struggled. He wobbled. He groaned. He stood to his feet and he said with a moan, Is there anywhere I can be truly alone? Just then overhead flew two red snoodered finches, winging their way toward the peak of Mount Ginches. I see, said the Snoodle. Then that's what I'll do. The home for those finches will be my home too. So painfully, struggling under his pack, the small Snoodle inched up the big mountain's back. He crawled over boulders in rain and in lightning. He trudged on and on, though the journey was frightening. Till finally on Sunday, at quarter past two, he spied all the meadows of Gilda Manju and realized he was on top of Mount Ginches, alone with the wind and his thoughts and the finches. He thought of the snoodles. He thought of the tower. He thought of the bell that would chime on the hour. He thought of his pack and his very long walk. He thought it so loudly, he heard his thoughts talk. Hello, said his thoughts. You've made quite a climb. That voice, he remarked, doesn't sound much like mine. Then he turned and he noticed he wasn't alone, for a man stood behind near a cave in the stone. He looked like a snoodle, though quite a bit bigger. Maybe a giant, the small snoodle figured. I'm going, the snoodle boy said with a huff. And don't paint a picture, I've got quite enough. But first, come inside, the man said. Have some tea. I'm so very pleased that you're visiting me. The snoodle boy stopped, though he'd only gone inches, and stared at the stranger he'd found on Mount Ginches. He didn't seem angry. In fact, he looked kind. The poor little boy was confused. Are you blind? I'm puny. I'm silly. I'm not all that smart. I can't use my wings and I'm no good at art. The stranger leaned down with a pain in his heart. Who told you these things? He asked. How do you know? These pictures I have in my pack tell me so. The small snoodle sniffled and started to go. First, if you please, let me look at this art. That makes your pack heavy and weighs down your heart. Then picture by picture, he unpacked the bag that bent the poor Snoodle and made his wings sag. Dear boy, said the man, these look nothing like you. Then into the fire, the pictures he threw. He rose from his chair saying, wait there, you'll see. But what you need most is a picture from me. The Snoodle sat patiently, sipping his tea. Then from a room in the back, he returned and said, Dear little Snoodle, it's time that you learned what you really look like. And he threw off the sheet, and what the boy saw warmed him right to his feet. The boy in the portrait looked older and strong, 
with wings on his back that were sturdy and long and a look in his eye, both courageous and free. Sir? Asked the boy. Are you saying that's me? I like to believe it, but sir, I'm afraid to. But I know who you are, the man said, for I made you. I built the tower and set it in motion. I planted the meadow, put fish in the ocean. And I feed the finches, though most noodles doubt it. Not one of them falls that I don't know about it. I've seen you fall down in the mud and the goo. I've seen all you've done and all you will do. I gave you your pack and your paints and your wings. I chose them for you. They're your special things. The Snoodle Kazoo is so you can sing about colors in autumn or flowers in spring. I gave you your brushes in hopes that you'd see how using them you could make pictures for me. Most of the Snoodles, the old one said sadly, just use their paints to make others feel badly. The young Snoodle pondered the things he'd been told, then wondering something grew suddenly bold. But sir, if you made this incredible land, can't you make Snoodles obey your command? The big one smiled warmly, then said to the small, A gift that's demanded is no gift at all. With that, the small Snoodle reached into his pack and pulled out the picture he'd made ten miles back. They're far lilies, sir, from over the bridge. The old one beamed bright and said, That's for my fridge. After the small Snoodle's picture was hung, the old one bent down to the face of the young. He said, Here's what you look like. Here's how I see you. Keep this in your pack and you'll find it will free you from all of the pictures and all of the lies that others made up just to cut down your size. And lastly, your wings. You know what they're for, but not just to fly, son. I want you to soar. But, sir, said the Snoodle, how can I fly? This picture's so big, I won't get very high. But this picture's special. It's bigger, it's brighter. Carry it close, and I think you'll feel lighter. As soon as he heard it, the Snoodle looked down and noticed that he was an inch off the ground. He laughed and he leaped and he flew from the cave, feeling now older and stronger and brave. And he flew through the clouds and he flew with the finches. He soared up and down round the peak of Mount Ginches. He flew over far lily bushes in yellow and thin bottle plants squirting snowberry jello. He flew over biggle bag trees and their fruits in big lazy loops for the land of Galoots. Then hurried back home to the center of town where the Snoodles all stood with their wings on the ground. And starting precisely at quarter past two, he told them the story that I just told you. Be the heroes. Oh, we 
Today, poor, there's trouble brewing. Um, there's no trouble brewing, sir. I just heated up some water in it. Not I... the tea, poor, not the tea. It's that creature in the alley. There is something wrong with his appearance. Something displeasing, something downright detestable. Well, I watched him dance last night. He looks a little weird, but... He's got some great moves. That's where you're wrong, Pool. Don't let his fancy footwork fool you. Ah, and watch this. The monster is afoot in Dr. Jiggle's house. Quick, Pool, we've got to warn the doctor. Okay. Mr. Butterbun. Dr. Jiggle, thank goodness you're all right. Well, yeah, I... Uh... Well, we've come to warn you. You've an intruder, a detestable disco dancing villain duck through your back door. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, well, uh, you must mean Mr. Sly. Mr. Sly? Oh, yeah. Man, can that guy dance or what? Yeah, didn't I tell you? That little thing he does with his hips? Uh -huh. He's got to be the best dancer in the whole world. What? You're in cahoots with that creature? Well, yeah. I mean, you gotta like a guy who can dance like that, right? Well, I suppose. I know I could never dance like that. I mean, just look at me. 
I'm too jiggly. Ever since I was a little boy in widely tailored pants, my only aspiration was to be a gourd who danced. But for what it's worth, my portly girth only served to make folks giggle. For the more I moved, the more I proved all I could do was jiggle. I want to dance. I want to grow. I need to feel the rush of the wind under my shoes. I want to dance. What was I saying? Barometer must be rising. Me joints are like a noop. Yep. I think Mr. Sly is great. On account of his non-jiggly, wonderful dancing and all, you guys would really like him. I know you would. Look, Dr. Jiggle, maybe I've been a bit harsh about this Mr. Sly friend of yours. Perhaps I owe him an apology. Would you mind introducing us? Uh, 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 no, I'm afraid that's not possible. You see, he's he's real busy. Uh, uh, but now, if you'll excuse me, gentlemen, I have work to do. No, uh, you know, gotta I do doctor just... stuff. Bye. Good night. Poor Dr. Jiggle. Something tells me he's in trouble, Pool. And I suspect it's no small fault of that new friend of his. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. If he be Mr. Sly, I shall be Mr. Sneak. Huh? Him. Do you have it? Yeah, I got it. Good. Now, remember, you give Mr. Sly the invitation before he starts dancing. Once he finishes, we'll go back to my house and have a nice talk over tea. Then we'll see what he's got up his sleeve. Got it. Okay, go. <laughs> Mr. Sly will be out at any minute. Look, Pool, this may be the last chance we get. Nobody's seen or heard from Dr. Jiggle in two days. No more mamsy pamsy pleasantries. When Sly comes out, we nab him. Pure and simple. Got it? Huh? Dr. Dr. Jiggle! Jiggle. Oh, uh, good evening, gentlemen. I trust you're well, Doctor. Ah, uh, I've been feeling a little woozy lately. Look, Doctor, why don't you join us? We're about to watch your friend dance. It'll do you good to get outside and whip up your circulation. Well, I, uh... <laughs> Flashy fiend! Au 
What have you done with the doctor? I said, what have you done with Dr. Jiggle? What? Those eyes. I know those eyes. Ooh. Something so familiar. Could it be? Taking dance lessons. All I ever wanted to do was dance, but I was afraid people would laugh at me for being so jiggly. So you dressed up like that kooky creature so people wouldn't laugh at you? And so people would like me. Y you gotta like a guy who can dance and not jiggle, right? But man, did that costume hurt. I think I bruised my spleen. Dr. Jiggle. We've always liked you, jiggle and all. Really? You can bet your wacky wig. And I think it's great you've been taking dancing lessons, but you don't need that silly spleen bruising get up to dance. You're special just the way God made you. Really? Say, that little move you do with your hips, you mind showing a rusty old carrot how it's done? I love that move. I've always loved that move. But I can't do that. Dr. Jigger. Oh. Oh, why not? Great. All right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wait, Come on. Yeah, it's going to be split. Stand back. Give him room. I can do it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do it. You see, Dr. Jigger. When you know God made you special, it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. You can just be yourself. Though your only aspiration was to be a gourd who danced. But I never knew that I could do in widely tailored pants. But for what it's worth, 